Hi, I'm Mike. It's minus 22 degrees out here this morning with a wind chill and it's dipping down about 30 below. Frostbite and the loss of a finger or your ears can happen in as little as 10 minutes. And the cows, well, they live out here along with many other animals on the ranch. Today, we take a look at how they cope and survive on our Wyoming life. <laughs> An almost certain question that we get every winter is, how do the cows and the animals on the ranch deal with the cold weather? Me, being one of those animals, I can say that I like to uh, work in the shop, or better yet, in the house with a nice warm cup of coffee. As for other animals on the ranch, well, that gets a little bit more complicated. Aaron won't uh, allow cows in the house, except for under special circumstances. And I have yet to meet well, any livestock that likes coffee or really anything hot. Although I'm betting that a pig would probably go gaga for some hot cocoa if it was offered and probably would eat the mug too. So how do animals on the ranch survive long cold winters? Today we take a look and we start with the chickens, which are over there. So the chickens may be the smartest. I can't say they're the smartest, Never mind. They're probably the most pampered of the animals on the ranch. They're smaller, so they're easier to get inside and into shelter. They're also a little dumber than our average livestock. So we have to make sure that they're safe because, well, they can't be trusted to, to make the correct decisions for themselves uh, in the cold weather. All of that happens right here in the chicken house where once the temperature drops below ah, maybe like zero, they're locked in and protected from not only the elements and the weather, but from themselves. So now I'm over here in the chicken house. The chicken coop is actually built for colder weather. It has solid walls and it's sealed to reduce drafts as much as possible. We also use straw or shavings as insulation on the floor to retain as much heat as we can. The geese are in here, they're loud too. Even the placement of the chicken coop all tucked away kind of back here in this corner is protected from the wind and uh, from blowing snow. The biggest threat to the chickens in cold temperatures like this is actually frostbite. Combs and feet are the most at risk and it's actually because chickens constantly exhale moisture and that moisture mixed with the air in the chicken coop uh, can cause all kinds of problems. So uh, in our chicken coop, we actually use this little guy. This is an electric heater uh, to heat at super cold temps and kind of take that edge off and move the air through the rooms. Make sure though that if you do run electricity that you take precautions. Most importantly, um, you know, don't leave any wires exposed uh, unless you want, uh, well, unless you want some fried birds. As with most, most animals, feed is also very important to, uh, to the chickens. Uh, we give them a, uh, a healthy feed uh, to help them retain heat and protein will actually keep them growing feathers all winter long. Our chickens this time of year are all egg layers and that protein also keeps the eggs coming as well. Water is important and making sure that you have flowing water is a necessity. We use dog waters here in the chicken house. Uh, they have built-in floats and uh, while uh, we do need to check on them, Every once in a while uh, inside, they do tend to stay up frost free as long as we've got that, that heater going. The biggest thing that we can do for the chickens in the bitter cold is to keep them inside. On this chicken house, we actually have automatic doors. Uh, they, they're disabled right now because we want to keep the chickens locked in. We also have ventilation by cracking doors or windows. Chickens will live through uh, this short, probably week long stint of sub zero temperatures with just a little bit extra. TLC. Next stop on the ranch is the pig pen. Let's head over. Normally pig production on the ranch is kind of a, a seasonal thing. Uh, high costs associated with keeping pigs warm have typically uh, kept us from having pigs in the coldest parts of the winter. This year, however, uh, we are faced with a uh, number of difficulties dealing with packers and, and all that kind of good stuff. So we're left to actually find a way to keep them safe and warm 
during the winter. And during the winter, pigs are, are constantly struggling uh, to stay warm. They can suffer from cold stress, which can uh, bring on health problems and, and reduced growth rates and, and all kinds of things. So while these guys don't need to put on much weight right now because uh, they are plenty big, we do want to keep them healthy. And uh, for them, it comes down to basic housing. During the coldest months of the winter, pigs are allowed to actually go inside the barn. Uh, we call it going through the bat cave and into the barn. Usually uh, it's reserved for cows and, and their calves and things like that. But it does feature a few amenities that the pigs appreciate uh, while freezing winds and snow and, and that kind of stuff is happening. Inside, we can have straw and hay. We can make a nice bed for them. We have overhead heaters that can kind of take the edge off. Without much hair, as you can see, uh, they definitely can use a little bit of help. Soon enough, uh, they'll be back outside and hanging out here as much as they can to enjoy the sun and space in this great big corral. So while chickens grow feathers and pigs have a layer of fat to keep themselves warm, our cows have a whole other way to cope, a whole different mechanism. And their first line of defense is a hairy coat, one that grows longer and thicker in the wintertime. It also catches the snow, which is kind of falling, and forms a layer over the cow. This layer is actually insulation and a pocket of air in between the snow and the cow's skin, another tool that they use to keep warm. Cows actually have a very thick skin. You're ugly, your mom dresses you funny, and you're a little overweight. Not that kind of thick skin, but their skin is 10 times thicker than yours and mine. It's also less vascularized, meaning there aren't as many veins and blood vessels and that kind of thing close to the surface, which leaves the cows the ability to not bleed uh, from most scratches, but it also uh, with less heat loss, as we don't have that much blood moving close to the skin. In fact, cows also have less sweat glands, smaller pores, and, uh, and less wrinkles. Actually reduces chafing and, and windburn as well. The biggest threat to cattle is wet snow, or even rain, followed by extremely cold temperatures. In those cases, we try to get them inside as fast as we can and get them dried off as soon as possible. Cows here on the ranch, well, they have almost permanent access to that shed up there. Our cow shed is actually open on one side. It's 100 feet long, 40 feet wide, and it's big enough to house up to 200 cows. Inside, they can stay out of the wind and, and even the snow using their body heat to help keep themselves warm. When they hear the tractor fire up, well, then out they all come uh, to get some food. Uh, yet another way that they actually keep warm in the winter time. These cows are actually finishing up this morning breakfast, but the food creates heat, and that's, uh, that's good for two things. Uh, it's good for warmth. Digestion keeps the cow uh, heating from the inside. And uh, of course, then you have the nutrition from the food. The other most important thing out here is water because a cow will not eat without enough water. So with all this shelter, water, and food, are the cows cold? Well, my grandma used to keep her house at a blistering 78 degrees all the time. My dad, on the other hand, had some sort of radar that could tell him whenever the thermostat was raised above 70. And maybe I do it sometimes too. And that temperature, most of us, we're actually putting on coats and gloves to stay warm. But with a body temperature of about 101 degrees, they're just fine. In fact, they have 30 degrees on us as far as an ideal temperature. Right now, it may be 20 below or whatever it is, but to them, it's still 10. May not seem like much, but you know what? I'd take that. Still, we help them. And by giving them a sheltered place to gather and uh, share body heat, well, it's one great start. Splitting up feeding to twice a day can help cows' bellies be constantly full and working to produce heat and basically making sure your cows are healthy 
with a good mineral program will it'll keep them uh, able to you know endure the cold weather that uh, that you just well we can't avoid it all the animals in the ranch have to be taken care of every day all day long that's our job and uh, while they're outside or or in a shed or even in a chicken coop we know that they're taken care of because we make sure to put their needs ahead of ours truth is most animals are at home right here in the cold temperatures thick skin and hair natural insulation it all keeps them warm and uh, we throw in a little bit of help here and there too luckily the cold won't last long spring will be here well before we know it and all this work pays off in the form of bottle calves and other calves and chicks and pigs and baby pigs and they all start making their appearances here before too long around the ranch. I hope you're able to be with us as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape, <laughs> is that good? Escape the ordinary. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, check out our website, rwyomlife.com and find out where else you can find us and learn about where your food comes from and where it really comes from and the families behind it. I'll see you next time. Until then, have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Ah, oh, cold out here. No one in. <laughs>